In this video, I want to discuss the differences between abstract classes versus interfaces. So with inheritance and abstract classes, a class can only extend one base class at a time, and all the classes are somehow related through inheritance, through the inheritance hierarchy. And with interfaces, however, a class can implement multiple interfaces at the same time, and you can create a collection of classes that are not really related and put them in some kind of array or array list. And all these classes, even though they may not be related, they share a common set of methods. Let's take a look at an example of this in Java. Let's first start by creating an abstract class called animal. Animal is something that is abstract because we don't know what an animal it could be. So we'll make it abstract. And something that an animal does is speak. So we'll make a public abstract speak method. And that's it. We just end it with a semicolon and click save. And let's create a couple animals. New class cow. We'll say cow extends animal. That's going to require me to have the speak method. Cow goes moo. And let's create two more animals. Class dog. That also extends the abstract base class animal. Because the dog is an animal. And that has to have the unimplemented method added called speak. Dog goes whoop. And one more cat that also extends animal and has the method speak. So just make this quicker. Cat goes meow. Here are my three classes that all extend animal, the base class that's also abstract, and they all implement the abstract method speak. So now let's create an interface and say that these things are alive. Create an interface called alive. Click finish, and if something is alive, it can public void breathe and public void eat. You can eat and breathe. That's two requirements for something to be alive. So, okay, so let's go back and require all animals to be alive. So animal implement alive. And click save, and that's going to require you to add those unimplemented methods in cow, and in dog, and in cat. Let's create one more interface. And, you know, an animal can be measurable. You can measure its height, right? Let's create an interface called measurable. And if something is measurable, we should be able to calculate the height. Public void get height. So create that interface and click save. And I'm going to go back to my animal class and implement an other interface by saying implements alive and it implements measurable. So a dog can be alive and you can measure its height. So let's implement measurable. That's going to give me errors again in cow, dog, and cat. Now I have to add the unimplemented method get height. And I'm not going to fill in the bodies of these methods. I'm just showing you guys how this all works really quickly. And you can fill in the implementation details later. So now you can, you can see that you can only extend one class at a time. And, but the class can implement multiple interfaces. So let's create something else that's alive and measurable, or at least just alive. New class tree. There's a tree. Should tree extend animal? It shouldn't because a tree is not an animal. But a tree is something that is alive. So it could implement the alive interface. That's going to require tree to have the methods breathe and eat. Okay. 
and something else that is alive. A video game character. Something that could be alive, you know. And that could also breathe and eat. So we implement that interface. And we could also implement measurable too for both of these items, but just to quickly demonstrate the point, I'm going to create a new class called driver that has my main method in there. And let's create a bunch of random objects. Let's create some objects. Cow, cow is a new cow. Dog, dog is a new dog. Cat, cat is a new cat object. Tree, tree is a new tree. Video game, character, Joe is a new video game, character, and I think that's at least one object of all my subclasses, or in classes that I have, except for my abstract class, which I can't instantiate anyways. Alright, so now let's try to do some polymorphism with these objects. So I can create an animal array called animals. And I could stick a cow, a dog, and a cat in there. And I could loop through all the animals for int i equals zero. i is less than animals dot length i plus plus. And for each animal I can say animals at index i dot speak. And each animal is going to make its own unique sound. Moo, wolf, and meow. Can I add a tree to my animal? Alright, I can't. It doesn't work because a tree is not an animal. Can I add a video game character? Can I add Joe in there? I can't because Joe is not an animal. However, I can actually create an array of things that are alive by using my interface name as the array data type. Alive things and let's just set this to the cow, the dog, the cat, the tree, and Joe. I can put all these things in an array of type alive and I can loop through each one and call the same method. I can't call speak because tree and Joe don't have speak but a method that these all have in common since they implement the alive interface is breathe and eat and so I can go through and call the eat method on each of these items which doesn't do anything but if I was to go in there and say the cat just implement this real quick cat eats eats fish and birds and the dog eats homework the cow eats grass Tree eats water, and the video game character eats coins, I don't know, whatever. Let's go back to the driver and run the program, and you'll see that each time I call the eat method, it's a different object, and that different object is doing different things. They're all eating different things. So this is polymorphism through the use of interfaces. So the nice thing about interfaces is that if you have a lot of different types of classes that share common methods, you're able to group them all together and call the same method on each one and do runtime polymorphism, which is a pretty cool thing. And it's kind of hard to do that with inheritance because those classes must be related for you to do that.